we're going to turn to your Q and A, uh, your questions, answer them here, and uh, you've got a Q and A button uh, at the bottom of the Zoom window that you can use to type in a question. Um, and so I guess I'm going to ask a first question here, and it's one I guess for either Will or for Ben, where uh, you know we're doing each of these topics twice, and so we did the first one Thursday evening, Friday morning. And I was talking to a couple of the folks that were listening in and they said, boy, I'm pretty familiar with blockchain. There was a lot of what you said that was familiar, but also a lot of information that was pretty brand new to me. And my sense is that the brand new stuff kind of fits into three boxes. The first relates to our communication schematic, CMEX, and that's there because of our emphasis and priority on privacy for users. Uh, the second category of kind of unique information is around the fact that we're our consensus mechanism uh, falls under the kind of Byzantine fault tolerance scheme as opposed to a proof of work, proof of, of stake system that people are more familiar with. And again, our motivation for the XX consensus being the way it is, is making sure we meet our goals of speed and scalability. And then the third category of, boy, that's, that's new to me, that's pretty unique. Uh, is just our use of, of post-quantum cryptography. And, and that comes from uh, our priority and our mission to make the XX network as secure as possible. And so those three buckets of unique information, is that right to think in those terms of the stuff that we're doing here that's going to be new to someone who's got blockchain experience fit into those buckets? Yeah, I think that that's a pretty good um, overview of kind of core differences. Um, I don't know, Will might have others that he wants to highlight. No, I think that was a uh, pretty good overview. I don't, I don't have too much to add to that. Okay, great. So we've got a couple of questions uh, that I'm going to kind of hand to Ben here. Uh, the first one comes from Keith. Uh, and it's a question about the gateways uh, for our nodes. Uh, could, could a node operator use something like a Raspberry Pi for the gateway, or could someone run a gateway even if they're not running a node? So right now, uh, we've been using a quad, fairly cheap quad-core machines to run the gateways. This isn't out of a performance testing in, in experimentation on the minimum spec. This just has to do with it's what we ended up uh, selecting for the Alphanet. Um, in theory, uh, a Pi would probably work for most cases. Uh, that being said, gateways, the idea of them is, uh, is that they're supposed to be scalable. So generally, what we, I think we'll ultimately envision is that gateways themselves are you know, you've got a small Pi-like server, a small server you run locally with ability to contract out to a cloud in the event of a DDoS attack. Um, so the, um, so, but essentially, yes, my guess would be that what they're currently used for now under optimal conditions, a Pi would be sufficient. Um, there was another question actually about them that was asked by Christoph, which was, uh, we need two servers for local nodes, and this connects this to the same thing. So currently local nodes are running on two servers. In theory, you could pair them on the same machine if it was slightly more powerful. Um, uh, and a lot of this has just been due to how the software is written and getting stuff out as quickly as possible. I think that um, in general, the way that, that these things operate is going to be fairly uh, uh, easy to use. and um, but for now, the current alpha deployments do have uh, two servers for local nodes. That being said, one of them is a very, very small scale, cheap uh, device. Um, uh, so yeah, that's it. Great. Uh, yeah, thank you, Ben. And so next, I've got a question from Jack. And I guess maybe either Ben or, or folks on the Praxis team could answer this one. And, and Jack asks, I don't immediately see how transactions initiated on a mobile device fit into this picture, uh, where it seems like a lot of computation would be required. Uh, and so, you know, how does a transaction, especially a mobile device transaction, work within the XX network? 
I will be taking this one, Peter. So this is Mario. Uh, this is a really great question and I, I really want to dive into this. So a very important point here is that the mobile device will only perform hash functions. So this is actually a super light operation that will take place. It will be, and on, on top of performing like all of these hash operations, which will be roughly uh, over a thousand, over a thousand hashes. So that's like very light for, for a mobile, mobile device. On top of that, it will, the device only has to send roughly 4,000 bits. So we require a mobile phone that can perform 1,000 hashes and can send a 4,000 bit payload. This is very, very light. Like the actual hardcore component, the, the heavy lifting is done in, by the actual platform. So mobile devices, this is very, a very modular design. A mobile phone can just do this very easily and send it to the network. And from there, the network does their own thing. And then like to actually check the proof of finality, this is like the equivalent. You would receive a couple thousand bits and just perform like 2,000, 3,000 hashes max, like max, max, max. So this, this would also take milliseconds for a mobile phone to check. Great, thank you, Mario. Um, we're happy to answer any other questions from attendees. You can, again, pose them in the Q&A box or also in the, the chat box down at the bottom of your, your Zoom window. Um, but with that said, we've been at this for a little while and I think we've covered a lot of material today. Um, and so while I'm waiting to see if there's any further questions, you know, first of all, we're always happy to continue this discussion online. We're especially active on our Telegram and Discord channels. You can find links to those on the elixir.io and praxis.io websites. And also, uh, coming attractions here, uh, our next webinar, which will be Thursday evening if you're in the Western Hemisphere, Friday morning or afternoon if you're in the Eastern Hemisphere, uh, we're gonna shift our topic focus to talking about token economics and governance within the XX network. And so questions around those kind of parts of our ecosystem we're looking forward to addressing. Um, and so I don't see any further questions for now. And so I would say other folks on the XX Network team, if you have any summing up comments, that's welcome. Otherwise, uh, we'll wish everyone a good day. Thank you everyone for participating. And uh, we're, as Peter said, we're happy to uh, answer more questions and we want to you know, express what we worked on and give you as good an understanding as possible. So please don't hesitate to join the Discord. Yeah, thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. We're, we're delighted to see folks uh, sharing our enthusiasm for the XX network uh, and this exciting technology. And we look forward to being in touch again soon on our next webinar.